Singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, accompanied by an organ, might seem like a summer ritual going back to the 19th century, but it's actually a relatively new tradition. In this video, I'm going to discuss the organ's history at Major League Baseball stadiums and give examples of how these musicians interact with crowds, players, umpires, and just generally add value to the spectator's experience. Let's talk about organ music, the ballpark special sauce. Water-powered pipe organs go back to ancient Greece, and how these instruments worked, I can't say, but Christian churches have used these orchestra-like instruments for millennia in their sacred spaces. In the early 20th century, Wurlitzer organs accompanied silent films and provided emotional backing to the comedic hijinks of film stars such as Charlie Chaplin. At these silent movie theaters, some of the country's very first stadium organists got experience playing for and reacting to crowds. The first fully electric organ, the Hammond organ, not only retailed at an affordable price in the mid-1930s, but could also fit easily into small churches and spacious stadiums. Here I should mention that the compact electric organ coincided with the first PA systems, public address systems. The Polo Grounds installed the system in 1929, and that changed one aspect of the ballpark experience. Now a sonorous voice might reverberate across the grandstands with the announcement, now batting, Freddie Lindstrom. The PA could also amplify music, including organ music. Chicago Stadium, home of the Chicago Blackhawks, was the first sporting arena to install an organ for the city's hockey team, and that decision influenced the nearby Cubs. Cubs owner Philip K. Wrigley installed an organ behind the grandstands in 1941, although it didn't become a permanent fixture until the 1970s. In 1942, the Brooklyn Dodgers hired Gladys Gooding as the team's organist, and she pioneered a new kind of interaction with fans. When the crowd disliked the umpire's call, she might play Three Blind Mice. When the Dodgers lost the 1952 World Series, Gooding played This Nearly Was Mine. In other words, she did not merely provide background music, she provided emotional accompaniment. Notably, Gooding played funeral songs during the last game ever played at Ebbets Field before the stadium's demolition in 1960 and the Dodgers' relocation to Los Angeles in 1958. Those funeral tunes matched the mood of the spectators during her last performance. Other organists, such as Red Sox' John Kiley, did not make himself part of the game. Unlike Gooding, Kiley did not prompt fans to cheer or shout charge. He might play after a home run, but his primary job, as he saw it, was to provide music before the game started and during extended breaks in the action. He and all other organists were doing something significant by playing as fans entered the ballpark and took their seats. They were setting the mood for a relaxing, festive day at the ballpark. Jane Jarvis, who played organ for the Milwaukee Braves and New York Mets, received instructions from Braves' ownership not to interfere with the game as Gooding was doing in Brooklyn. But she found her own opportunities for creativity. When Hank Aaron hit home runs, Jarvis would play Dance With Me Henry. And when the Braves won the game, she would play another song, Happy Days Are Here Again. Jarvis, like so many stadium organists, knew thousands of songs from memory and could draw on that incredible knowledge to respond swiftly to whatever was happening on the field, whether that be a cat loose or umpires conferring about a call. Today we associate the organ with Albert von Tilzer's classic tune, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and the widely beloved ritual of singing the song while swaying back and forth during the seventh inning. That tradition might seem as old as baseball itself, but in truth, it's relatively new. Chicago White Sox broadcaster Harry Carey began singing the song a cappella during the seventh inning, and fans noticed. They liked it and eventually joined in. Soon, every team featured Take Me Out to the Ball Game with accompaniment from the stadium organist. I should also say that organ music had its heyday during the 1970s, 
Every ballpark had an organist, and this cohort of musicians provided a unique layer of live engagement with the crowd that can't be reproduced by DJs or recorded sound. As for me, I was blessed by the sounds of Nancy B. Hefley's organ at Dodger Stadium from 1988 until her retirement in 2015. And I will say that going to Dodger Stadium would not be the same without organ music filling the grandstands. In the comments, let me know what ballpark sounds are the most nostalgic or mellifluous to your ears. And thanks for watching.